Hey, welcome to my journey and to another Dollar Train Dinners. Okay, y'all, we got some good stuff today. I'm here to tell you. What do I always tell you? I'm not making you nothing that I won't eat myself. Some of this is something I've done before. So it's not like it's new to me. You, you know what I mean? It's just we have the availability of products at the Dollar Tree to be able to make it. So let's see. The first thing we made was a big old pot of chicken and vegetable noodle soup. Very good. Very economical. You get a lot of servings out of that. Very budget friendly. And then we have a chicken pot pie with the help of some turkey gravy. Another one, a lot of servings, very economical. Then we have, this one is a throwback. I made this, well, like pot pie, I've made it with biscuit mix before. So stuff like that, I've made noodles with spaghetti before. But this is um, something I used to make when I was a single mom. I was a single mom for a while with RJ. And so I used to make this back then. And I love it. So when I saw the ingredients at the Dollar Tree, it rung into my mind. I'm like, you know what? You ain't thought about that in years. And so I'm like, we're making it. And the cool part is, there's no meat in it. But the cool part is, Holly, she appreciates a meatless dish. Like the um, pasta salad I made last week. Oh my gosh. She loved it. So apparently the Dollar Tree... Zesty Italian dressing is good because she loved it. Told me I can make it anytime. So if you missed that video, I will try to make sure that's the one I link at the um, end of this video. So you can go back and see because I'm telling you, she loved it. So I think she's going to love this too because she she was raised with a, a vegan mom. I think she started vegetarian now she's vegan. So she's no stranger to no meat. And... I guess growing up around it, she likes it, which nothing wrong with that. So if I can give her some things she likes as well as RJ, then bonus score. <laughs> and then this week we did something new. We made a dessert. Yes, we did. It is nice enough. Listen, you could take this dessert to a potluck. There is nothing wrong with this dessert. It is a name brand graham cracker crust. It's name brand pudding. It's name brand cookies. And it's name brand milk. So there you go. People that worry about something being at the Dollar Tree ain't good. Even if it's a Dollar Tree product. You know what? You know what? They probably stop. Pick any name brand that you want. I've seen, I've seen shows about this. But pick a name brand. Okay. They're on the machine, they're running it, they're filling the cans, they're filling the jars, they're filling the boxes. Stop, reload the box, reload the jar, reload the, the bag. Okay, pick up, keep going. It happens. What you're eating named Dollar Tree could be, I don't want to say a name because then somebody will say, well, you said that it's, and, and I'm not, I'm just saying. They do that. A lot of our store brands, our generic brands, our actual name brands just packaged differently because uh, y'all know a lot of what we're paying for is the name. Names are not necessarily a better product. But when you find a name brand at the Dollar Tree, you get excited because you know if you were to buy that at the regular store, way much more. So anyway, let me stop talking. Let's start cooking. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This will be my last one for at least a week because come Monday, um, let's say you're seeing this Sunday. So tomorrow, that's not what today is, but you're seeing this on Sunday because that's when I like to put them up. Tomorrow, I will be going in for a total knee replacement on the right. So I know you won't get one this week. And I told RJ, I said, no food next week. He goes, oh, you mean you can't get up and cook after having that? I'm like, <laughs> so, um, I don't know, maybe give me a couple weeks to recuperate enough to where I want to stand around and cook and film. So, 
Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the series. I'm not quitting it by any by any stretch of the imagination. I have food in there on my bed that tells me I'm not quitting it because I've still got plenty more things up my sleeve. So, like I said, let's quit talking and let's start cooking. We're going to start on this soup. I am bringing up to the ball. I have one box of chicken broth. They have this one and they have another brand that may be a Dollar Tree brand. I'm not sure. This is one that you can find at the regular grocery store, but either one will be fine. So I have a box of that in there and I wanted it to be, um, I wanted more, but to say, and I forgot to put this in the picture. I didn't buy this this time. That's why I wasn't thinking about it. I had these left from one of our earlier um, meals so if you have them left, then you've already paid for it and counted against your meal. If you haven't, then just get one of these. And there's 25 in here, so that's going to last you a long time. To make the uh, soup have more cheaper, I used four of these to four cups of water, because one cube is one cup of water. That comes out to about 20 cents for another four cups of broth instead of $1.25. So that could have been two fifty for this pot of soup, this part of it. Instead, it's like a dollar and forty five cents. So that's one way to stretch your budget is with these little instant bouillon cubes. If you wanted to, you could do the whole pot with this. You absolutely could. That is completely up to you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this come up to the ball. Okay, we've come up to the ball. I'm gonna add two cans of chicken. It is their crinder brand chicken breast I'm not going to drain them we can use that flavor I'm also going to add one bag of frozen mixed vegetables this is a 14 ounce bag and there's no water to count if you can find it frozen get that because you're going to get more for your money in here than in a can but if you can't find it frozen get one or two cans of the mixed vegetables and use that. You won't have to cook it as long. I like to cook my frozen vegetables until they're really um, tender. And you can see there's a lot more carrots in there than anything else, but I think they like carrots, so that'll be fine. I'm going to bring this back up to the ball and probably cook it about... I'm going to cook it before I add the pasta. So I'm going to cook it about, let's say, 10 minutes. After it comes up to the bowl, cook it for 10 minutes. All right, I simmered that for 10 minutes. I brought it back up to the bowl. I'm going to add our noodles. I'm using the thin spaghetti. This is that big box. They still have the 25% off, 25% more packages. Save this and make yourself some sketty or something. I'm going to give it to RJ, and then they can make that there. I can save it, and we could do more meals with it, but I figured they could use it um, more than me holding on to it to make a meal. So I think the vegetables will be where I want them to be after we get this pasta done. Now, I know a lot of people don't have food scales. I have them because I was... Um, started Weight Watchers, and that's when I got them. What I'm going to, I've already pulled it out here. I'm going to show you how much I'm going to use. When you put it in your hand, it's, I would say, would you call that a, a nickel? A nickel? Maybe a, between a dime and a nickel? And what I want to do, I'm just going to take a little bit at a time because I want these in small noodles like if you would get them in the can like that so I'm just gonna break them off okay we got all that in there let's give it a stir and we will cook this until the noodles are done and that, again, will be to your liking. We like ours um, soft. We don't like al dente pasta. I don't know what RJ likes. Today, he's going like to so <laughs> like soft ones. <laughs> smells really good. 
So just cook that until your noodles are done to where you want them to be and your vegetables. Our soup is done. Obviously, you can see I've got to let it cool off before I can um, package it up for them. But look, look how pretty. Look at all those noodles. And all you had to do was break up some spaghetti. You don't have to buy anything fancy. Nothing fancy at all. And I got them some saltines to go with it because I know I got to have crackers in my soup. So there's a nice big pot of soup. Now hang on and I don't know, something's coming up next. So now we're going to make a chicken pot pie with the help of some turkey. What I want to do is take one can of the mixed vegetables drained. So you can tell. I preheated my pot, can you tell? A can of diced potatoes drained. I wanted potatoes in it, and there are not any in the um, mixed vegetables. A lot of the mixed vegetables you buy at the store will have the potatoes in it, but these don't. Then I want to add two cans of the white chicken. I'm going to use the juice. Now I want to cook this a little bit first. I maybe want to try to well, I want to soften up the vegetables a little bit before we add the gravy. And then maybe um, boil down some of that liquid and get that flavor concentrated. So let's bring this up to the ball. Let it cook a little bit until some of that liquid goes out. And I'll show you what it looks like before we um, go on. I have boiled this pretty vigorously. And you can tell a lot of the liquid's gone. I've cut my burner off because this glass top will stay hot forever. What I'm going to add now is a jar of this turkey gravy. They have some some kind of gravy in the can. I can't remember what it is, but you get more of the... Hold on. You get more. Hold on. Oh, goodness. As I was saying, <laughs> you get more if you buy this jar. And this is what I said, we're making chicken pot pie with the help of turkey. We're gonna use the turkey gravy. If you don't wanna um, make stock and thicken it yourself to make a pot pie, there you go. Just get you some gravy. And I'm just gonna let the heat of the dish heat up that gravy because I just want to, it's not going to take but a second you see how that chicken it just fell apart that's how I like my pot pies if you okay let me tell you this if you want chunks of chicken add it now boil your vegetables which are not real well they're not really going to have the juice you can put the um chicken juice in and ball that ball that but what okay i'm trying to say <laughs> you can put the chicken juice in the vegetables ball that around to get the vegetables softened and get some of that flavor in the taters and whatnot and then after you add the gravy and everything then add your chicken if you want it chunky i like my chicken just like this shredded that's how i like my pot pies so you um, choose either way that you want to do yours now let's come over here i have a eight inch bacon dish um fall pan I guess you could say from the Dollar Tree and this is my tip if you use their fall set it on something because it's not the sturdiest that you've ever seen it's very 
um, very easy to misshape. So I'm just going to pour this in. Boy, that is just the right size, ain't it? Oh, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, hold on. Okay, we're going to set this aside. And what I should have told you was I was preheating the oven to 400 while we were cooking this. I'm going to use this Pillsbury Homestyle Biscuit Mix. Just add milk. And there you have it. Milk straight from the Dollar Tree itself. We just need a half a cup of milk. And the reason I preheated the 400 because it's um, what these biscuits bake at. And you see our filling is hot. So we don't have to worry about getting our filling hot. That's why we're um, cooking it on the stove first. Because we just want to cook this long enough to get the biscuits done. Seems like I had the same problem the last time I made these. Uh, did I have to add more milk the last time I made these or not? I think these will be okay. Okay. Let's slide that right back over here. And we're just going to drop our little blobs of biscuit dough. Okay, we are going to bake this at four, 400 degrees. The biscuits bake eight to 12 minutes. They may take longer because they're in this liquid, but we're gonna check them after eight minutes. Here is our finished chicken pot pie. You can see the biscuits started to get brown. I didn't want them to burn. I checked, I pulled up the biscuit to make sure everything underneath was cooked and it's cooked so that took 10 minutes i did it for eight checked it added two more minutes to it so i did mine for 10 minutes just check yours at eight and see how far they need to go so hang on we'll see what's coming up next now in case you wonder what you're hearing on this side <laughs> i'm multitasking while i'm bringing my water up to the ball for the macaroni and cheese i'm gonna do the pudding for the pie. I have a box of Jello chocolate pudding. I'm using my milk. Two cups, just regular old pudding. And I think my water is ready for macaroni. So you know what? We'll just film this one in the way we're doing it. I need to hit the slide. I just have a box of regular old, oh it says thick and creamy. Oh that'll be good. I didn't realize that. So nothing, nothing special about this. We're just going to cook our macaroni. Like you cook your macaroni till it's done. I'm gonna make it nice and tender. Now I've got to get back over here and whisk this pudding. Okay, now we're gonna take our graham cracker crust. I was so excited to see this at the Dollar Tree. And you know, this is your lid, so don't get rid of this. So, let's put in our pudding. It's pudding and pie filling is what it's called. So, we're not doing anything crazy spectacular here. We're just making it a little bit fancier, that's all. Make something a little special for your kids instead of just making them a thing of pudding. Make them a, just a cheap little fancy little pie. So what I have here is, I'm going to move this. Just 
It's called the Big Bag of Oreo Minis. Um, let's see. I'm, let me put this. I'm afraid I'm going to pop that when I start squishing it. So hold on a minute. Let me put... I'm putting just a little air hole in the top. You see that? And these are not so hard that you can't just mash them. I think it might be okay. What I got a jar handy. Let's use it. There we go. Get your rolling pin if you want to. I keep this jar handy for measuring water, taking medicine, <laughs> mixing a uh, water drink, uh, uh, instant tea. It's just my little handy jar I keep over here on the side of the sink on my dish drainer. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got going on in here. Oh, look, some of that cream got cookie stuck to the side. I think that's good enough. Now we're just going to sprinkle those all across the top. And if you want more cookies than this, buy as many Oreo cookies as you need. But I think this, once we get it all out, is plenty. I wanted to get this done and get it in the fridge because it's getting close to time to Holly to get here and I want it to be cold for her because she'll be the one who will be liking this more than RJ. Okay, the rest of it's stuck and I'm not going <laughs> to... There, doesn't that look good? All right, now let's take our little plastic thing off. I'm going to peel off these little, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, the little plastic that sticks on the, sticks the label on. I'm also going to peel that off. Don't need that on there. And then we will just close this up. And there is our Oreo chocolate pudding pie. All right, I drained the pasta, put it right back in the same pot. Now, turn your burner down low. Or if you have a stove like mine, turn it off. You, you heard it sizzling and the burner's off. So, now, we don't have butter, so we're not going to add butter. I'm trying not to sizzle that up. But I want you to see. We're going to add milk, but I don't know how much milk you add. Because, I, honestly, I've never read the package. <laughs> this is one of those things you just do. If you have butter, you want to add it, add it. We don't have it, and frankly, you're not going to miss it. Now, this is a throwback. Actually, I think I will tell you about that. I haven't filmed it yet, but I think I will tell you about that in my intro. So I don't want, see, I want to keep it kind of thick. I don't want to keep it too watery because I'm going to add one can of diced tomatoes. Now, when I used to make this, the tomatoes came flavored. They had all kinds of flavors of diced tomatoes. So you could have, like, taco seasons, Italian seasons, all kinds of different things. And so every time you made this, you can make it different. Maybe I do need to turn that on low a little bit. Um, but they don't, the, what I found at Walmart is the, well, you can buy basil and oregano, so you can buy that. But dog tree, you can't. And you can buy um, green pepper, celery, and onion, I think. But you can't get that at Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree, plain diced tomatoes. 
but you can by Italian seasoning. So we're going to shake in some Italian seasoning. And here, just do it. Do it till your heart feels right. You can do it and taste it. Add some more. Do it by sight. Do it by smell. I think that's all I'm going to add. And that's it. That's as easy as it is. And delicious. I could go for leaving this here for myself, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so here is our Italian Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. It's delicious. I don't even have to taste it to tell you it's delicious because I've eaten it enough. <laughs> this will wrap up our video for today. I think we have some good meals for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Not sure when I'll see you for the next one, but we'll talk about that in the intro. So I will, I'll just see you when I see you.